what exactly is SmartSuite and is it a good fit for your business or organization? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com and we're a no-code implementation partner. For full disclosure, we are a SmartSuite certified partner, but that being said, we have a number of clients on many different no-code platforms, so I'm trying to be as objective as possible as we do this review today. Now, I do have an affiliate link in the description below, and you can get 15% off if you decide to upgrade a plan. However, this video is not sponsored in any way by SmartSuite, and I'm really going to focus on the trends that we've seen from our different clients who choose to implement SmartSuite. I know review videos can be a little bit long sometimes, so I am including timestamps below if you want to be able to navigate quickly between sections. So the first thing I want to talk about is how SmartSuite is positioned within the no-code ecosystem. And it's always hard to put these diagrams together because I know as soon as I create it, someone's going to say, well, that's not quite how that works. But take this all with a grain of salt. In general, I think on one end of the spectrum, we have more functional solutions, which are designed for specific use cases, namely, in this case, project management. So you've got your ClickUps, Asanas, and Mondays that all are really centered around project management. Monday also has product management as well as CRM functionality, but by and large, it's focused on project management. On the other side of the spectrum, you have what I consider use case agnostic solutions that are meant to be really configurable. Things like Airtable and WeWeb and Bubble, which really allow you to create very personalized experiences. You can create exactly what the screen looks like that you're displaying information on. You can use it to configure mobile apps and web apps and different kinds of interfaces. And some of these tools specialize in being more technical versus more configurable. But in general, it's the idea that you can build your own solutions based off of the unique needs of your business. Now, these solutions don't try to be the best project management tool in the world. Instead, they want to be a bit of CRM and a bit of project management and whatever you need it to be. But it comes at the expense of your building it yourself as opposed to using functionality that comes out of the box which we get more on the functional or project management end of it. And that's where I think SmartSuite is most trying to play is between those two worlds. So they take some of the project management functionality you get on one side, but they also try to be configurable so that you can really tailor it around a number of different use cases. Next, let's take a look at the pricing that's available. And so if we go to the pricing page, you'll notice that there's a number of different plans. This is driven by per user per month kind of pricing which is what we see typical of many different applications within the space. There is a very, very generous free plan. And honestly, there's a ton of people, including many clients that we have, that stay on the free plan forever, especially if you're a solo person or you have a small team. So what you can see is that if you have three users, it's not going to cost you anything. But once you get up into four or more users, that's where you're going to start being charged. So I don't want to come as a shock to anybody else that when you have four users, suddenly you have four paid users, either on that team plan or professional. Now, here's the one thing that I really like is that enterprise, even though, hey, $35 is not cheap for a user per month, but it's very transparent. There's not this kind of cloak and dagger, hey, contact sales and we'll tell you about our pricing. You know exactly what it is. So if you get into the position where you need really unlimited functionality, you know what that price is going to be on the enterprise side. But let me show you what I think is the coolest part about the pricing is that if you scroll down and you take a look at the different features here, we've got a lot of numbers oriented things and I wanna talk about that in a moment. But if you scroll down, just look at the different check marks here. There's not a lot of differentiation. In fact, if we show all, look, you're getting pretty much all the functionality on each of these plans. Where I think the pricing differentiation really comes into play is going to be around the records per solution and app. And so a record is think about it like a row in a spreadsheet and how many of those do you have? So if you have a large Rolodex for your CRM and you've got 10,000 contacts that you're tracking, well, right away, that's gonna bump you into professional. So it's good to be thinking about how many different records of data do we have inside of our system to think about where you need to be. Maybe you can get started with free forever or team, but you know eventually you'll have to get into the professional bracket. And so it's good just to keep an eye on that. I also think the automations is something that also brings people up different plan levels because automations are super useful. And we'll talk more in depth in a little bit, but only having 100 automations a month probably isn't quite enough to get the job done 
if you're a large and growing business or organization. Of course, you can see file storage between free forever 100 megabytes, not too much, but getting even to that $10 user month plan with 50 gigabytes is pretty generous. Then when it comes to the core functionality, like I was talking about before, and we scroll down, it's really things like application permissions and field level permissions and authentication. It's much more enterprise-y type functionality. And that's what I really appreciate is that we're not gating all of these features. We're not saying, oh, only these certain types of views are available on these lower tiered plans. When you're a member of SmartSuite, you really feel like you get access to pretty much everything there is and that it's mostly priced based on consumption. When you first log into the system, this is what you see. This is your workspace homepage, and this contains a number of different solutions that you might have. Now, solutions are the nomenclature for essentially your high-level workflow in your business or organization. So I would say a CRM would be one workflow or one solution. I would say project management would be another solution. And we might have a number of different solutions that we create for our clients or we create for ourselves, but these solutions are really easy to get started with. You can click this blue plus button and you can create one from scratch. But I recommend most people start with a template. And unlike many of the other no-code systems out there, I think a ton of thought has been put into these templates. They work pretty well right away out of the box, as opposed to some other templates that I've seen with other systems that are just very outdated. So you can choose by your line of business. Maybe we want to look at marketing and we can see a number of different marketing templates that we could choose. We could learn more information about it, and then we can install those templates. I decided to use the CRM template, and so we can see a number of different apps across the top, things like our accounts and our contacts, our opportunities, and we're able to tailor this to the needs of our own business. And this comes again to that more configurability side of it, where we could press this plus button and create a new app. And this gives us the ability to be able to add the fields that we need to, to be able to track the information we're looking for. Now, by default, because this is a database, and really a database is just a tool that links different records together. So unlike a spreadsheet, if you use Google Sheets or Excel, where it's just kind of ad hoc data, databases are all about linking information together. So how do we have our contacts that link to the accounts that they're currently at? This is the idea behind a database and what a lot of other successful no-code applications are built on top of. But one of the nice things about SmartSuite is the ability to look at our data in different kinds of ways. So by default, we look at it in more of this grid view, which looks like a spreadsheet, but we also have the ability to be able to say, maybe I want to look at these accounts and where they're located geographically. And I can do this with a map view. And so I can actually zoom in and I can click on an account and see where they're located at. Or I have my contacts and I want to be able to look at them in a more visual way in this card view. Or we have our sales pipeline and we want to be able to track our opportunities between different sales statuses. So as you can see, we have a number of different views to choose from, including full-on interactive dashboards and charts, as well as timelines, different forms that we can create to collect information a lot of different possibilities when it comes to constructing that data. And the cool part is that we don't have to sync these views or get them to talk to one another. It's all the same underlying data. Instead, it's just different ways of visualizing it. And we can always add and remove any fields that we want as well. We can press this plus button and we can see there's a number of different field types. Let's explore all of these. And in fact, in SmartSuite, there's over 40 different types of fields. I think that's more than any other no-code application out there. There's a lot of the basics you'd expect, like currencies and numbers and things like that. But one of the things that really lends itself to that project management side of the spectrum that we were talking about is these different project essentials. So we can assign these items to different people. We can create checklists, which function as subtasks. We can create time tracking logs. And so if I add a time tracking log, we can see that here. We can click on it and we can have different people be able to add and input time and be able to track that, which is very different than some of these more database oriented tools that don't really account for the project management functionality. If we open up one of our records, we have the ability to organize this information into different sections. So rather than looking at maybe a hundred different fields here, we can actually create sections and collapse and expand this information so that we have the most important information right at our fingertips. 
there's another field type called a smart doc field. And SmartSuite is really trying to help bridge that gap instead of having to use both a no-code application for your database management and then use another tool like Notion or Coda for your documentation and SOPs, the Smart Doc allows you to create some of that documentation inside of the system. So here's an example of some of the things that you could create with a Smart Doc. You could put in images, you could have app mentions of the different people on your team, you could capture notes, tables, callouts, lots of flexibility when it comes to capturing those notes or other documents inside a Smart Suite. Now, many no-code applications treat each solution or each database completely like it's its own self-contained unit, which means you never really get a full picture of everything that you as a user need to do inside of the system. So I'll give an example. Maybe you have a solution for internal project management, the goals that you have for the quarter and what you're working on, and then you have a project management solution for the clients that you're working with. Now, if we were using other tools to do this, they would treat each of these as two separate databases and you never see a unified list of all the tasks that you need to work on. But this is where SmartSuite takes a different approach by creating a number of different unified areas at the top of your workspace, which go across all of your different solutions. So up at the top, we have our member directory and we can see information about each person on our team and their skills and their certifications. We also have the ability to star items, and this can serve like a menu of our favorite things, or we could say, oh, here's the leads that I need to follow up on. And so we could star those so that rather than having to traverse and navigate everywhere in the system, we get one easy spot to be able to do that. And then we have our My Work area, and this I think is one of the central features of SmartSuite is the ability to have different tasks from across different solutions, but be able to have one spot that you go and see everything that you need to work on. So I can see what tasks do I have that are overdue or that are due today. And even if they're coming from different places, I can manage them in one spot. So I can say, yep, I have finished that for today and I'm on to my next task. And then we also have notifications. And so this could be things like when a record gets assigned to you or when your permissions have changed inside of the system, lots of different things that can trigger notifications. And that we can see both here as well as in the mobile application, we can get push notifications as well. We have the ability to communicate with internal and external stakeholders with our communication center, which we can access on any record. If I click on this, we have our comments, and this is going to be for our team internally. So we could at mention someone on our team, which will be able to pull them into the conversation. We could assign them that thread. Or we could also send out emails, and we have the functionality to create a new email. We could use a particular template to be able to send out information and then actually capture the responses inside of SmartSuite as well. Now, when it comes to roles and permissions, this is something that SmartSuite handles particularly well. So we've got different workspace roles. We can say who's an admin or who can create and edit solutions or who's just an average member of the solution. They can get their work done, but they don't need to actually create solutions inside of SmartSuite. And then we also have the ability to have guest access. Now, this is a great feature. You can have non-licensed, entirely free users that can be guests and they can see information that's assigned to them and they can even update a status. Aside from that, it's all read only. Being able to say, hey, contractor, here's a task that's assigned to you. And then they can say complete on their task is pretty powerful to not have them be a paid licensed user inside of the system. But permissions get way more granular than this as well. So we could say for an individual solution, I only want my sales team to be able to see the CRM. Everybody can see project management, but only the salespeople have access to the CRM. Or maybe we're fine if everybody else can see the customer information for accounts and contacts, but the opportunities themselves are restricted. And we say, let's override our permissions and only this group of people can actually create opportunities or can interact with those opportunities with a number of different security roles that you have. And we can get one more level even more granular by having permissions down to the field level. Maybe because this is financial oriented, we only want certain people to be able to see this. So we can edit our field level permissions of who can see this and then who can edit this as well. SmartSuite also has the ability to have really powerful automation. And so in our solution, we can create new automations. We have a number of different triggers that we can choose from and we can do various different actions. And so 
a lot of no-code applications have the ability to have automations within the core application itself, like based on all of our tasks being complete, let's finish a project. That would be really common no-code type of automation. But in this case, we also have a number of different integrations that you can use for no additional charge. Of course, you still have to pay for the base application. So Slack has its own subscription fee for Slack, but these integrations themselves you can use within the application with no additional charge. And so we could say, hey, if a record's created, a new lead comes into the system, they're using Smart Suite Forms, we've captured their information, let's fire off a Slack notification. Let's send a note on Microsoft Teams. Let's send an email to us. And there's a lot of flexibility to be able to create the automations that we need without even going to an outside platform. But that being said, you want to be able to have that additional flexibility when it comes to integrating to your other business applications that you do through Zapier and through Make. So let me just show you real quick. I'm inside of Make. And if I search for Smart Suite, I'll be able to pull this up. We have a lot of functionality. So we've got instant records that we can pay attention to when there's new records or updates. And then we can do a bunch of different things that we need to to be able to integrate those applications directly in these iPaaS platforms or there's really good developer documentation if you want to be able to use the APIs directly as well. Oftentimes for no-code applications, support is kind of left behind because these no-code tools have a large freemium model and so they have a number of free users and they can't support them. But this is something that Smart Suite's really strategically invested in. You can just click on intercom that they have here. You can send them a chat message. You can create a ticket. You can log a bug. You can see their entire roadmap that is client facing. You can log your own feature requests and upvote the requests of others. So the transparency and the sense of community around Smart Suite is really huge as this no code application keeps growing in the marketplace. So hopefully now we have a pretty good understanding of the feature set of Smart Suite and where their position in the market space now it really comes down to the decision of, is this the right tool for you? Now, for most people, I'd say, yeah, give it a try, because I think Smart Suite is really the Swiss army knife of no code tools within the space. So I think Smart Suite's a good fit if you're a small organization and you need a tool like Smart Suite that can be tailored to meet the needs of your organization as you're growing and iterating and changing over time. I also think it works well for large companies too, because you have the ability to have different departmental solutions and be able to have them interact with one another and control the access and permissions of who can do what inside of the system. So when wouldn't you use Smart Suite? Well, if you're just doing project management functionality and you don't really deviate from that, you might not need the Swiss Army tool of Smart Suite to accommodate those needs. And so there might be other options available for you. Or on the other side of it, if you're looking to create an entirely custom application and you want to control the behavior of where every single field on a screen or interface sits, then Smart Suite's also probably not the right solution for you. Now, for many organizations, I think Smart Suite is going to be a good fit. And remember, you can always sign up for Smart Suite using the link in the description below. We're also offering free 30 minute consultation. So if you're in that process of deciding what's the right no code tool for you and how best to implement it for your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com.